Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Max from CryptoPotato.com and today I'm joined with Alex Romanov, the CTO of the Beam Project. Uh, welcome Alex, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. Great, so let's get started. All right, so let's start with the first question. Can you introduce yourself and the team behind the Beam Project? My name is Alex Romanov, I'm CTO of Beam. Today our company has already about 20 people. Uh, our CEO, Alexander Zydersen, is currently at San Francisco. In the blockchain, participating in the blockchain week, representing our company. We also have Vladi Gelfer, who is the lead developer, uh, Ben Isenberg, who is the CMO, and uh, Amir Aronson, who is the CEO of the project. Very strong team, both technically and uh, management-wise. Um, I myself uh, am developing software for the last 15 years in many different projects and many different technologies. And uh, currently, together with my team, we're building BIM, which is a confidential and scalable privacy coin. Your project is trying to implement the Mimble Wimble protocol. Can you tell us a little bit about the history and the idea behind the protocol? Yeah, so um, as you know, one of the problems with Bitcoin today is that uh, it's not really as anonymous as people would expect it to be. Uh, it's relatively easy for uh, anyone today to uh, de-anonymize one of your addresses and then track all transactions from and to this address from today and going back to the uh, beginning of the blockchain and uh, then later for eternity because uh, if you don't change your address or you, you reuse it, it's basically traceable. And also they can trace transactions from this address to your other addresses. And today there are companies that actually specialize in ex exactly this kind of de-anonymization. So the problem of privacy became a really um, important one because it prohibits using Bitcoin in any practical use case, both by businesses and private individuals. And uh, there were several solutions uh, to this problem, but all of them uh, had uh, some disadvantages, some problems uh, related to scalability and implementation. And uh, about two years ago, in uh, July 2016, an anonymous author published a white paper. And uh, uh, in it, it it's very short white paper, it's like five or six pages long, and it, it, it describes uh, this idea for the protocol called Mimblewimble. And uh, in this protocol, the author managed to resolve this problem of privacy without uh, adding additional information to the blockchain and quite the opposite, making it smaller and more efficient. And this protocol immediately attracted a lot of attention of people from all around the industry. And uh, Andrew Polstra was the mathematician who reviewed this protocol and uh, uh, wrote a paper about it, researched it, and uh, produced uh, uh, some videos that can be seen on YouTube explaining how this works. And uh, uh, about seven months ago, in February this year, uh, I was approached by a longtime friend of mine, Guy Korem, who is a crypto guru in Israel, and he is a long time in this industry. And uh, uh, he came to me with the idea of implementing this protocol. And um, uh, I was immediately very intrigued because the technology looked interesting and uh, very innovative. And uh, indeed, this protocol is uh, extremely elegant. So the idea of Mimble Wimble is basically a combination of two concepts. Uh, the first concept is confidential transactions. Confidential transactions encrypt the value of the transaction, so it is not visible to anyone outside the participants of this specific transaction. And the transactions are created and structured in such a way that allows combining them together later and removing all the intermediate steps. For example, if you have a UTXO that you send from A to B and then later from B to C, you can remove the B and the only things you care about is how A got this UTXO and the fact that C currently owns it. So if you extend this logic to the entire blockchain, you basically want to trace only the creation of new beams, the Coinbase transactions that are created by miners, and the current state of the system. And this is leading us to much more compact representation of the blockchain, uh, which is much smaller than Bitcoin, even though it's also confidential. Both of these ideas were not new. Uh, and when the uh, Mimble Wimble paper was published, they were known and uh, used in several different concepts. But this specific structuring of the transactions uh, allowed to achieve this effect. 
And one of the things that uh, Mimo Wimble had to give up as a trade-off is the Bitcoin script. In Bitcoin, each transaction is described using this specific script, scripting language, which is not Turing complete, and it's used to describe the conditions under which this UTXO can belong to someone. And because of this script, uh, since it's written in relatively generic language, the transactions cannot be merged together. In Mimblewimble, all the transactions look exactly the same. It's a cryptographic primitive, which is called Pedersen Commitment. It's a cryptographic commitment scheme that has two properties. It's binding in a way that once I encode this value, I cannot go back on my, on my promise. And it's also hiding. So until I disclose the private key which encrypts this specific transaction, no one can know uh, what it, what, what's in it. And this idea of structuring uh, transactions this way allows later to combine them since they're exactly the same in structure. One transaction is very similar to another. This whole concept allows to gain significant uh, advantages in terms of blockchain size. Today in uh, Bitcoin, the blockchain is already like 200 gigabytes that you need to download and verify before you can start mining or validating transactions. In Mimblewimble, it could be 10 times less than that. So it's an order of magnitude improvement. And it's very important in order to be able to efficiently add new nodes to the system. So this is the idea behind Mimblewimble, how it started. And uh, these are the key benefits that it brings to the table. Complete confidentiality by default and very small and efficient blockchain size. We're all familiar with other privacy coins such as Monero, Zcash, and Dash. Can you tell us the main advantage of Beam? Yeah, so the main advantage of Mimblewimble uh, over these protocols is scalability. Zcash uses uh, zero-knowledge proofs to ensure privacy, and uh, thus they add a lot of information to the already large blockchain. They're actually a fork of Bitcoin, so they inherit all the B Bitcoin structures, and then on that they add the, the layer of privacy, which makes it even larger. Monero used three different mechanisms to create confidential transactions. So they, they have uh, ring signatures for the sender side. So actually each transaction is signed by several people, only one of which is the real signer and the others are used as decoy. Today they use rings of size five. So four people are decoy and only one is the real signer. And this allows you to have deniability in case somebody decrypts the transaction. They don't really know who of the participants really signed it. Then they have the confidential transactions similar to what is used in Mimblewimble to encrypt the value. And on the receiver side, they have shielded addresses which protect the receivers. And the combination of these three mechanisms uh, create the privacy in Monero. But they also have the same problem with blockchain being much larger than Bitcoin. And it's also a major problem in the, in the long term. Dash actually uses some sort of centralized solution. And uh, since we are aiming to be uh, participating and competing in decentralized and completely permissionless environment where, where like nobody trusts anyone and everybody has to validate, so it's not actually uh, in our field to compete with them, they have completely different mechanisms to ensure uh, privacy of their coins. So we have recently heard of another project called Grin, which also aims to implement the Mimblewimble protocol. Can you maybe tell us the differences between that project and yours? Yeah, so uh, Green actually was the first uh, group of people who started implementing Mimblewimble back in November 2016, shortly after the white paper was published and shortly after Andrew Post did additional research and uh, uh, provided the theoretical basis for this protocol. Uh, Green are doing something uh, completely different from what we're doing. We're trying to create a confidential store of value coin, which means that we have finite capped emission, so called controlled emission, and uh, green have infinite emission, so any second one green is created for eternity. And these are two completely different purposes and two completely different goals for the projects. We both use Mimblewimble protocol, but outside of that, everything is different. We use different programming languages, different architecture, different trying to create different ecosystems. Uh, we use different mining protocols. So there are actually more differences than uh, similarities. We respect Green very much. They did a great job. Uh, they're community funded. They're going to the fair launch of their coin when they're ready. And uh, 
we both participate in a lot of discussions about Mimblewimble throughout the forums and uh, channels on the internet, so we actually communicate quite a lot. They have a lot of great contributors, John Trump and uh, Andrew Poster both contribute uh, in some way to Green. But uh, most of the members of the core team of Green are anonymous and uh, we don't know who they are. Um, so these are the key, key differences between those projects. Can you give us some details about the performance we can expect from the Beam blockchain? So in terms of performance, Mimblewimble actually solves two out of three major problems uh, that uh, are happening with Bitcoin today. It solves the privacy and confidentiality and of course the size of the blockchain, but it does not solve the problem of uh, transactions per second. So it's better than Bitcoin today. Today in Beam we can expect about between 16 and 20 transactions per second, but it's not large enough to actually uh, use it as transactional coin. In terms of the blockchain size, compared to Bitcoin, it grows as a function of number of UTXOs and not number of transactions, which on average is about an order of magnitude smaller than Bitcoin. So we can expect at least one order of magnitude reduction in the blockchain size, which is very important for scalability and adding new nodes to the system. In terms of transaction per second, Mimblewimble allows extending the protocol both on first layer and adding second layer solutions such as for example Lightning Network or Thunderella. And using these solutions we can improve transactions per second significantly and make Beam usable also as the means of exchange or transactional coin. Smart contracts added new capabilities and functionality for the world of cryptocurrency. Do you at the Beam project plan to implement any sort of smart contract functionality? Yeah, so as I said, our first use case is store of value. And uh, we are not aiming Beam to become a computational platform of any kind. However, there are some very interesting features that we can add on top of Mimblewimble using a technology which is called scriptless scripts. So as I said before, Mimblewimble had to give up on Bitcoin scripts in order to be able to gain scalability. But it is still possible to add additional functionality using cryptographic primitives instead of scripting language. It will not be as versatile or, you know, it's not a general purpose language, so you cannot actually code anything. But uh, you can implement very interesting things and we are using it to create atomic swaps uh, and auditable transactions, which is a very important part of BIM, that will allow businesses and individuals to use it effectively. Uh, and in addition to that, we can, if we want to, expand it and add some kind of virtual machine to it, but it's not the goal of this project and we're not going to do this in the near future. So we already know that you guys are not planning on conducting an ICO anytime soon. Can you tell us your go-to market strategy and how you plan to reach your communities? Yes, so uh, we're not doing an ICO. Uh, we are funded using the treasury model, same as, similar as Zcash. What it means is that a certain percentage of the mining reward for each block goes to the treasury, which is used to fund the project. Uh, next year, we're launching the nonprofit foundation that will govern the project and the protocol going forward. And today, we're building communities of supporters of privacy coins, uh, enthusiasts, uh, developers that want to participate and contribute to these projects, and of course, miners. And we believe that uh, if we succeed in doing so, we will have a viable project that will continue for many years to come. And the final question is, what is your status and what are your future milestones? So right now we're in testnet 1, uh, which includes a fully functional node and a graphical wallet. We launched testnet 1 about a month ago. And right now we're working toward testnet 2, which will be released uh, October 25th, towards the end of this month. In addition to all the features we currently have, it will also include the mobile wallet and uh, atomic swaps with Bitcoin, which is a major feature to you know, improve adoption and uh, allow people to change, swap Bitcoins for beans. All right, Alex, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, if anyone wants to find out more about the Beam project, you can check the links in the description for their website, Telegram, GitHub, and their Discord. And if you want more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel or check out our website at CryptoPotato.com. Thanks for watching.